All right, hi guys. Uh, we're gonna show you, if I can count this high, maybe 10 of my favorite animals that are in my hands, because what actually are my 10 favorites? I don't have such a thing. But I'm gonna show you a really cool animal that does things that other people don't realize. Snakes, some snakes can actually vocalize. Oh, oh yes. So this animal right here, look at the big eyes. So she's gonna look kind of look like a boom slang. <laughs> I don't know how much you got of that, but it's I got it yeah. all. Yeah, here we go. So this is Pataius carinata. So this is the keeled rat snake. So these are from tropical Asia, and uh, these are really really cool snakes that get really really long. And sometimes when people in the wild encounter these, they actually will kill them because they think that they're a cobra. But unlike cobras, they, if you look at the, the facial shape of that, far more pointed, uh, big eyes. So this is a very active uh, hunting animal that's gonna eat birds and lizards and mammals. But it's a really cool snake because of this vocalization. Kind of sounds like a dying cow, right? <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go and get number two in another run. This happens to be a species that is near and dear because there's a lot to figure out on this animal and this species fascinates me. So this is in fact the bucket list Bolens python on many people's lists. Just to actually interact with one and hold one is uh, it's not too common to actually find people with them. And I have a bunch of these and I love them. So this is definitely uh, one of our uh, our directions we're trying to go is I'm downsizing a lot of nerd what we have for like animals. I'm just gonna kind of work with the animals that are like near and dear to my heart and animals that are like challenges, actually challenges to hold. You're just, there we go, coiling up on me. These animals are just ridiculous. They start out kind of reddish when they're young and they're like velvet and you can see real, real nice iridescence. Crazy. She's not cooperating with me very well. She's just, I woke her up and I took her out of her cage. So what she's doing, she's doing an act of desperation. And the next, if you think this is bad, the next snake, look at this. So the next snake is the king of wrap ups, for sure. Look at you. This is a really, really interesting species. This animal has tons and tons of personality. This is probably, let me get her out. No food, I know. Okay, very, very, very strong. So a lot of times people don't even know that these guys even exist. And this is the Papuan Python. So from Papua New Guinea, pound for pound, this is probably one of the strongest uh, species of snake in the world. And they are truly like omnivores as far as actually I should say not omnivores they're uh, as far as what they eat so they're gonna eat snakes they're gonna eat birds they're gonna eat lizards they're gonna eat any single thing that they can pretty much get their hands on or their mouth like, wow that's really terrible hands we know we know snakes on hands but anyways this animal right here will ap actively go after birds and rodents and other snakes and lizards I had one get loose years ago, and it went on an eating spree. And it ate, oh, that was interesting. It ate, um, it ate a caiman, it ate a Muller's chameleon, and I was really, really sad, because I had uh, this big Muller's chameleon that lived loose in this big, giant setup, and then in the bottom of the setup was this awesome caiman. And one of these guys went in there and ate them, and it broke my heart. But really, really cool species. Uh, very few people have these. I've bred these guys three times. So they're very, very interesting. But this is a lot like a Bolens python. And a lot of people wouldn't even know that. But they're really cool. All right, what are we getting in here, Kev? I don't know. We'll just, we'll, we'll pull it, we'll pull it out. Just, um, what will I take? I will. Hey baby, come here. Come here. I'm gonna take out some bala. Come here. Hi. Hi. 
Hi. Hi, go get that. Mm. This is Hypo Sambawa. Okay, so here's here's just a really cool monitor. Ah, oh, look at this. So you are shedding. So this is a Hypo Sambawa water monitor. So this is a locality specific uh, type of Varanus. So this is Varanus Salvator. But these are very, very small growing. And I'm the first person ever to breed these in captivity. And all oh, your claws are super sharp. And they are slower growing, they get much smaller, and the first ones I dealt with out of the wild were absolute monsters. But now, I have the lovely uh, enjoyment of getting to deal with super chill, wonderful captive bred animals that are completely associated with people and bonded. So much, all it wants to do is climb on my head. Hi baby. And why does it want to be up high? So when it's up high, it feels safe and it feels like it pretty much has a, a visual on everything and they're always forever looking. They always want to make sure that they're safe and they're assessing everything. So if I put them up high, they're able to, you know, just kind of look down. So this would be this, you know, the equivalent in nature to being up in a tree where you can kind of just scope the landscape. But she's not worried at all by me, but she's a little bit worried about, I took her into another room. But look how beautiful that is. So, Sambawa. So this is, this was a, a long road, going from wild-caught Sambawas that I had to raise. Uh, one thing that was interesting about the Sambawas I was getting, they used to call something the zombie disease. And when these guys were coming in, they would get a blood coming out of their mouth and they would just like, one minute they're alive, and the next minute they just, they just die. And they called it the zombie disease. I'm not dealing with any of the wild costs anymore because I deal with all my captive. These are also very, tend to be very, very nervous. So the first ones I was making were still pretty, pretty nervous, but now we have just these lovely uh, captive bred animals. I'm doing water monitors right now that are probably six generations removed from the wild. And so what I've been doing is I've been working on breeding smaller growing types of Salvatore water monitors. All right, so here's another, uh, this, is, this is an interesting morph right here. So this is a coral albino. So coral albino, I'm the first producer of you know, T negatives and T positives uh, in captivity. And uh, this is actually a T negative, T positive double. So it's the culmination of one parent gave the T positive gene and the other one gave the T negative gene. And this is just an absolutely lovely animal. Uh, like I said, I am working on making smaller water monitors. Stuff that uh, comes from some of the, uh, the islands where the, the monitors just don't get as big. And I've now incorporated that into my breeding projects. But you see how wonderful it is? That's awesome. I love Donnie and Soma. So these are really, really cool. I Started out with colubrids, and since I'm gonna die next week, I'm gonna end with colubrids now. <laughs> so, colubrids. So, when we talk about colubrids, what are we actually talking about? We're talking about like rat snakes, king snakes, animals that are generally, uh, so they're not pythons, they're not boas, they lay eggs, and uh, there's so many different types of colubrids, but I tend to like some of the unusual colubrids like a red tail rat snake that climbs onto the camera. This is Gonosoma oxephala. My brain is just not in the game today. So the top one, the yellow one, is an albino, and then we have a melanistic. Fun fact, this is the only albino we know of in the world. Hi, sweetie. And we're gonna try to reproduce these. Oh yeah, we're, we're already uh, lining everything up for uh, some, some breeding of my F1 animals, but yes. Uh, I, I want to make more albino red tail rat snakes. Definitely, I want to make some black rat snakes too. All right, here's a very special animal to me. This is Crowley. Crowley is an albino melanota, Boega melanota. So this is an albino mangrove snake. And this, <laughs> just like the albino red tail rat, what do you see? It's missing the end of its tail because they came out of the wild. So when breeders are first uh, starting their projects and we wanna actually have, I mean, it all happened with albino ball pythons, 
pie ball ball pythons all the different snakes they all originated out of the wild and you have to bring those genetics into captivity and then you actually have to breed it in captivity so people can eventually get to have their very own albino mangrove snakes and that's one of our objectives and like anything some of the stuff can really take some time because you're getting these guys out of the wild they're riddled with parasites sometimes they just don't do well and you really some of it's just luck obviously a lot of good keeping and uh, management practices are critical but this is a very important animal and what's really cool can you see here right up where my finger is So I'm gonna show you a snake that came out of the wild. You can see its heart right through the snake. It's, uh, it is a, a morph and it's something uh, very, very uh, new, at least to me. And uh, it's interesting today. A lot of the snakes are just like, their, their handling is a little, everybody wants to crawl the wrong way. Uh, and so I'm just struggling a little bit. But he's wonderful. So this is a very, very special animal. But as we know, this is uh, quite likely the only one in the world, just like the albino red tail rat snake that we know of, or certainly they're about as rare as they get. But look how fantastic that is. So this is kind of like the see-through snake. Can we see that? Yes. So you can actually see the heart. So the heart is right at the tip of my pinky. So this is an ivory synodon. So this is a dog tooth. But I guess so, oh yeah, look at that. Hi, sweetie. But you can see all the main blood vessels. There's really like not a lot to this animal's mass. It's, it's like ridiculous, but they can eat really, really large items. Um, they'll also eat a lot of bird eggs. But you, can you really see those blood vessels? Yeah, you can see them perfect. There's the heart. You can see the heart beating. See it by my thumb? Um, yeah, that's great. Isn't that cool? This is the T negative blood python. This is Python Brogger's by. But this lacks all melanin. And she is exquisite and wonderful. And contrary to what people think, they're called blood pythons because of their color. Because a prime example of one of these would have blood red coloration throughout it, making it look like it's covered in ox blood. But in some cases, they like to bite and you'll cover them in your blood. And this is a species that a lot of people uh, don't keep because they, they have misconceptions of these animals. But I'm really, really uh, in love with blood pythons and short tail pythons because you get all of the big snake just the package and you get it all in this little short snake so you get like the girth of let's say a 10 12 foot animal but maybe the snake is only four or five feet long and if you work with them they're smart animals they're a little untrusting and if you work with them you can uh, establish a uh, relationship with them you can establish trust and then you have this wonderful animal such as she thank you so this is an Amazon Basin Emerald. So these are larger growing than the normal Northern uh, Shield Nose Emeralds and such from uh, Guyana and Suriname. But uh, they tend to be a little bit more tractable. Uh, but in my, in my observation, I can make like normal uh, Northerns quite, quite reasonable too. The one thing is they have giant teeth. They have uh, huge forward uh, fang-like teeth which help them penetrate uh, through feathers and whatever for whatever the food items or the prey items that they're eating but very very sweet this is a, generally an animal that's best looked at but not handled too much uh, they just don't often like being taken out and like, let's say if I just took it out and just started letting a bunch of kids play with them that might be a little too stressful certainly to repeat that over and over again uh, could be you know stressful for these animals and you know, here and there, fine, but if you want a snake to play with a lot, you know, obviously there's so many other great snakes which have no problem constantly being uh, messed with. But look how cute she is. All right. Okay, here's a northern emerald. Uh, but you notice, even though her name is Grumpy, they, they do get a little bit geared up for your heat signature. So you want to be a little bit wary. 
wary. But anyways, guys, uh, hopefully you've noticed when we were trying to actually post more often. So I really appreciate any subscriber that is uh, showing interest in our channel. And that's why I let you know we're trying and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And please like and share and follow me on all my social media. And you guys are truly wonderful. And thank you for actually caring to even hear what I have to say.